In fact, modern science was actually born out of the Christian belief that God was rational and personal. No, it was not. Scientific advances have been achieved long before the birth of Christianity, and science has nothing to do with any religion. Religion requires accepting things based on faith and never challenging your beliefs no matter what evidence is presented. Conclusions are reached before any evidence is considered. Science requires you to let go of all preconceived notions and reach a conclusion based on the evidence available. And those conclusions are never set in stone. New discoveries and innovations are constantly changing and improving our perspective. Early scientists such as Copernicus, Galileo, Bacon, Newton, Pascal, and Faraday believed in the biblical God of objective truth and order. Philosopher Francis Schaeffer notes, it was the biblical belief that the world was created by a reasonable God that gave scientists confidence in being able to find out about the world by observation and experimentation. Here we go, picking on scientists who lived centuries before either evolution or natural selection were understood. Firstly, these people were raised from birth to accept the church as the unquestionable authority. However, while Isaac Newton had some pretty eccentric beliefs, they were not able to be successful scientists until they rejected religious dogma and the church's authority. Second, the theories proposed by some of these individuals flew right in the face of religious teachings and were viewed as a threat to the church's authorities. Copernicus kept his work on the ground until shortly before his death. Galileo was tried as a heretic for his observations. And Isaac Newton's ideas that the forces of the universe could be predicted by mathematical laws created much controversy in regards to the existence of free will. Finally, it does not matter what they said about anything, because we have modern science and modern technology, which has long since confirmed what they were right about. They are remembered for being innovators in their time, not infallible authoritative giants. The argument from authority only works in religious circles, not scientific ones. And I would think that Y Origins would be grateful for that. For instance, meet Eratosthenes of Cyrene. In around 240 BCE, he used a method called triangulation to measure the circumference of the Earth as well as the tilt of its axis with surprising accuracy. However, I doubt the authors of Y Origins would be so quick to promote Greek creation mythology. This is Omar Khayyam, a Persian mathematician and astronomer who helped create modern-day algebra and proposed a heliocentric universe hundreds of years before Copernicus. Yet they never lie about his religious beliefs or mention the Quran in this article. Many scientists today do believe in a creator, but there is a huge range of beliefs on the creative process. Yes, finally, a brief snippet of truth. According to a July 2009 article I found in the Christian Post, about 30% of scientists in America say they believe in the existence of a personal God. However, almost none of them would ever suggest any evidence to support young Earth creationism, although there are a few crackpots that slip through. Some scientists believe God created everything outside of natural laws. We're going to take this long ladder from here to Chicago and split it all the way down the middle. Each one of the rungs of the ladder is going to be cut in half, all the way from here to Chicago while it's twisted. It is going to unwind from the other half. So we have two half ladders. That's going to join up with the other half ladder from your husband or wife, wind itself back together from here to Chicago, and make a child. You're a moron. I've never seen anyone garble biochemistry so badly while others believe he designed or directed natural laws to create our universe and life within it. If irreducible complexity is right, then the parts of these machines should be absolutely useless. But if evolution is right, we should be able to take these machines, look at their parts and discover, wow, they do other jobs. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the bacterial flagellum. So if we start with the flagellum, here it is, and these drawings name the genes and the proteins in the flagellum, and we say, let's take away a whole bunch of the parts. How many? Um, not one, not five, not ten. Let's take 40 of its 50 parts away. Now watch very carefully, because I'm going to do that experiment right there. There it goes. The parts are all gone, and I have left ten parts that span the membrane. What are left behind are ten proteins in the base of the flagellum. Now, if irreducible complexity is right, this should be absolutely functionless. It should have no function. But if you'll pardon the double negative, what is left behind is not 
non-functional. What is left behind is the type 3 secretory system, and it is fully functional. Um, I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a theist. In, in the broadest sense, I would say I believe in a designer, but you know what? I don't believe in a deceptive one. However, many who speak of an underlying intelligence in the universe are agnostics who are simply reporting objective evidence for something or someone that Einstein labeled, quote, an intelligence of such superiority that, compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection, end quote. Oh, come on. What kind of quote mine is that? It's not even a complete sentence. Here's the full quote. The scientist is possessed by the sense of universal causation. His religious feeling takes the form of a rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law, which reveals an intelligence of such superiority that, compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. Since why Origins is so keen on quoting Einstein, I wonder why they don't use this line. Einstein rarely discussed God, but he was in awe of the superintelligence revealed in nature. Since Einstein, many other leading scientists have revealed stunning new insights about our origins. These new insights have come in the past few decades, primarily from the three scientific disciplines of astronomy, molecular biology, and paleontology. I will be discussing more about Albert Einstein in a video dedicated to why origins quote mining. However, Einstein never professed a belief in a personal god. And that hyperlink text that says Einstein, guess what that links to? That's right, the Albert Einstein Wikipedia article. This is going to be a long series. Why origins is full of creationist crap ranging from the humorous to the infuriating. Why origins is guilty of a ploy called term dropping. That is, mentioning a complex sounding concept in the hope that the gullible masses will be fooled into believing that they actually know what they are talking about. And while Wikipedia can be useful for simple fact checking and for finding off site resources, linking to broad topics instead of information specific to your argument is not terribly convincing of anything, and I would expect even a middle school English teacher to reject any paper that's cited in such a manner. Peter, do you kind of have a boner right now? Shut up, John. Yes. <laughs>